All right, so welcome everybody. Uh, this is my talk uh, titled Inner Source is like sourdough. I'm Sebastian and I'll talk about myself in just a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, and on the right hand side, you actually see uh, pictures of some nice sourdough baguette. And most of the pictures in the talk are going to be from my own, own baking, which I'm really proud of, as you can tell. So uh, moving on, uh, is this talk scientifically scientifically correct so is inner source really exactly the same like sourdough well obviously not that's not my uh, ambition for this talk however what i'm trying to do is give you some mental pictures of how a living culture like sourdough might be similar to the behaviors that you see in inner source uh, and i found that it actually helps me reason a bit about how inner source collaboration works and I want to make my prove my point immediately, actually, by showing you this picture of the Inner Source Commons logo and some uh, some loaves that I made recently. And you can already see that it somewhat looks similar. So there's there's your proof in the pictures. So a bit about my context. Uh, I've been working as a team builder for a while, uh, and I'm also an avid hobby baker. So the team building I've done for the last 15 years, uh, while the baking is just Corona plus a little bit something. Uh, however, as a team builder, I've, I've built 10-ish teams or so and work with many more. Uh, and then as a baker, I've probably baked uh, around 500 breads in the three years. So I've been pretty, pretty busy. So you could argue that maybe I even have more experience uh, baking by now than I have in, uh, in team building. Um, let's jump right in. Uh, so raising agents and for the people here that maybe don't know that much about baking, don't worry, it's not going to be super uh, in depth. So raising agents that are used in baking, there's on one hand side, there's baker's yeast, which is something you can buy at any supermarket. Probably many of you have used baker's yeast before. <clears throat> then there's also sourdough, uh, which is something that you can actually create from scratch at home. Uh, if you like, and it's a living, uh, breathing culture that needs to be fed and nurtured much like, uh, much like uh, any other living creature. That's why most sourdoughs have, have a name. For example, this one, which is mine, it's called Cornelius and lives in, <laughs> lives in my fridge. Uh, a couple of properties of these things. So baker's yeast is meant to uh, optimize for fast rise. So it will get your dough to rise within an hour. Uh, it's also optimized for really reliable results. So it kind of produces the exact same result every single time, assuming somewhat similar environment. On the other hand, sourdough has a lot slower rise, tends to require a lot more experience to work with, being a little bit more difficult to work with, essentially, which, which has led fewer people to, to use it uh, over time. <clears throat> now, contrasting that to software development, so in the like a team source or siloed type of development um, that many companies are in, you can actually get really fast development and reliable shipment, but with the asterisks that you will only get that when the teams are actually working on their own components and they don't rely on something else, right? While if they rely on something else, they might get blocked pretty quickly, which is something that inner source tries to help with. Then in inner source, in comparison, you'll have a lot more communication <clears throat> and establishing a working practice uh, in an organization takes a lot of stamina and time. So it's truly uh, a bit more difficult, right? However, uh, when just looking at this, you might argue, well, then why should I be using inner source if it's all too complicated? Well, I would argue, well, we want to we want to solve more complex problems and we want to bake more pretty bread. Um, so we actually need uh, other approaches than just siloed source or closed source, however you want to call it. So a couple of other properties there. So baker's yeast tends to be somewhat unhealthy for the digestive system, especially if you if overused. Uh, it also spoils faster. So the baker's yeast itself spoils faster, but also the product, like the bake uh, the baked goods that you produce with yeast, they don't last for as long. Uh, in contrast, sourdough seems, uh, seems to be a lot healthier for many people. As a matter of fact, many of the issues that sometimes are attributed to maybe gluten intolerance or something like that often are actually from the fact that people cannot deal with the yeast that well in their stomach. 
Uh, and also sourdough itself lasts when you when you refresh it frequently uh, it it can actually last for many many years uh, sourdoughs that are uh, claimed to be over 100 years old that people keep in their fridge and also the the final results uh, last a lot longer than than yeast products so you can easily keep a sourdough bread for for a week if you store it properly and it, it will still taste great now again comparing that to software well in the closed source team sourced environment you'll often find ownership cultures and if overused they can become problematic like this is mine this is yours you cannot look at this you cannot use this go away type of behaviors um and that also creates a lot of follow-up problems. And one of the one of the key problems that I'm always looking at is it makes handovers to another team or maintainer switches a lot more difficult. In contrast, in another source, while you're focusing on a collaboration culture, um, and that leads to many things like written documentation and access to clear access to communication channels that everybody can use, not just the people that are inside the core team. Uh, and essentially will also lead to easier long-term maintenance of the projects because you have so much written documentation that it's a lot easier to onboard new people to the team, but also to eventually possibly hand over the project from one team to another because all your working habits have constantly been optimizing for for other people to contribute and for other people to understand it and well that's what we're looking for right we're looking for being able to reproduce somewhat similar things and keep them um keep keep them living like keep the projects alive for a longer time right most pre, uh, projects are not meant to die when the when the team switches and one argument that i want to make here is that i think both with inner source and sourdough nature, nature actually wants this to happen like it wants it to work this way and in sourdough i can actually prove that somewhat because if you throw uh, flour and water together you wait for a while and you keep refreshing it for a couple of days eventually you'll have sourdough uh, and humanity has, uh, has discovered that like thousands of years ago and discovered that and rediscovered that in many different places over and over again. So it's just, it's just a property that is there, right? So it's not something that is man-made. It was just available in nature, if you will. Uh, and I would argue that this quote here from Tim O'Reilly somewhat says the same thing. So the quote goes, given enough connected developers, all software development will emulate the best practices of open source. And I think what he's saying here is that it is somewhat a natural property of a large enough network of developers that eventually they'll start to behave that way, even if you don't prescribe that from the top, right? So that's the same effect in a way. It's a natural thing uh, to, to happen. And another point there also is that I think both inner source and sourdough, they are contagious cultures. So let's look at this again from the sourdough example first. If you have uh, just six gram of sourdough and you add that to 1.5 kg of dough, so just wheat and uh, water and salt, over roughly 24 hours that that six gram will actually leaven they will rise the whole the whole dough right so a, a tiny portion is enough to actually make that work and also from a looking at the cultural metaphor here well baker's yeast has a single culture it's a single culture selected and grown to do one thing and one thing only which is uh, create really aggressive rise in the bread while with sourdough that you grow at home, depending on where you grow it, you'll have 10 to 15 different natural yeast cultures um, in, in that sourdough. So it's a lot richer, but it's also a little bit more, uh, more fragile, of course, uh, in, some, in some conditions. Now, translating that to how this works in teams again, what I find is that teams that are practicing in a source and uh, organizations as well, they end up adapting faster over time because they are constantly probed from the outside, right? So they constantly get requests, they practice their communication, they improve their documentation and that type of stuff. So eventually they 
end up adapting to change faster. Also, through that mechanism, they end up building more adaptable software. Because if they get a lot of requests and they realize, oh, people are requesting something that we could solve by providing a plugin system, or we have to change the architecture of our, of our software so that we can make it more easy to contribute to one thing without having to redeploy the other thing or those type of, those type of mechanisms. Uh, so teams practicing in a source will actually change their software to, to be more adaptable. And on the contagiousness end, what I've found is that individuals that have worked in an open source slash inner source type way before, they will carry that experience and those behaviors to any other team that they'll be working with in the future. And that, uh, that works both when they're actually switching teams, so they're working with a new team or maybe even with a new company. But I find it also works when, when they just Maybe they just send a pull request to some other project in your company and that project or that team might not even be working in with that inner source mindset yet. I think given that the receiving end is somewhat open to that type of um, contribution, they might be at least interested or curious about, oh, that's interesting. We're getting this request from the outside. And rather than somebody saying, look, I need this thing from you, please build this for me. In an inner source approach, it might be more like, look, I've looked at your component and maybe we can make this change here and I've made a pull request that gets us halfway there. Can you help me bring this over the finish line? So it creates a contagious type of culture in that sense as well. And with sourdough, just like with inner source, we can bake many different things. Uh, with many different properties and we can build very different and also larger software projects. So this is not just for your tiny, tiny hobby project or whatever. Uh, this can work for really large software systems as we saw uh, yesterday also from the IBM Watson example. And two more points here that I want to make is one with baking with sourdough, just like with software development and teams and organizations. It's very, really, really important to fail and learn. And yeah, I'll show you one uh, shameful example from myself. So I wanted to bake these, I think it was banana bread on the left-hand side, and that's a picture from a recipe book. And I followed all the steps, or that's what I thought I did. <laughs> and I ended up baking this absolute mess here on the right. So I got the shaping wrong, and I got the dough consistency wrong, and at the end, uh, to make things worse, I even left it in the oven for too long. So I had this terrible thing that I barely, barely could eat anything off. But then over time, I was able to uh, work the recipe a little bit more and I understood how it worked. So I produced something that at least looks a little bit more similar to, um, to how the original recipe looked like. But you can also see that I actually ended up morphing it, right? Because I had a different need. I needed to bake for a larger group and that type of stuff. I think, again, that's a comparison to inner source as well. Uh, you don't need to do it exactly like the other team does it, but the contribution can still be super, super uh, valuable for that other team. Um, and uh, just like um, in, in, other, in, other, in other areas, you don't need to make all the mistakes yourself, although mistakes are important. You need to try and fail and learn. You can also learn from the best. And I think in the case of inner source and the inner source comments, that, that means you can try the recipes of others be it uh, adapting things that are written in the learning path or also uh, using some of the patterns that we have published in our inner source uh, patterns book which are things that other companies have tried in the inner source concept context and that has uh, that has worked for them so please try this out uh, and add your contributions and i'll share to the i'll share the link to the inner source patterns book uh, after this session so that was my talk. I'm Sebastian, Sebastian Spear. I'm working as a director of engineering programs right now. And as a matter of fact, I'll actually be looking for new opportunities in 2023. So if you have inner, uh, if you have collaboration type problems in your organization that you're looking to solve, I'd be happy to talk to you. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>